Hey guys, I'm Hop. Thanks for tuning in to TFB TV. I'm out at the range with the new Ruger 1022 Charger. This one has an 8 inch barrel. It's compatible out of the box with folding pistol braces. And as configured, I think this is the greatest 22 plinker ever made. Let's take a look at it. The 1022 Charger is a pistol variant of the 1022, and it's been offered in a few flavors since being introduced. The old ones were oriented towards target or varmint shooting. They had non threaded barrels, laminate furniture, and were very boring. When Ruger reintroduced the Charger, it was with a new 10-inch threaded barrel, and it was available with polymer furniture in both standard and takedown models. The cool feature of the plastic furniture Charger was that it could very easily accept a buffer tube adapter, allowing you to slap a pistol brace on one and turn it into a totally different kind of gun. I had one of the 1022 Charger takedowns with a copper custom buffer tube adapter and a shockwave brace for a while. The keyword here is had. We'll talk more about that later, but when it worked, it was a lot of fun. Well, as of this year, Ruger has updated the Charger lineup to include a few new models. The Takedown Light model with the vented style of barrel shroud similar to the Ruger Mark IV Light, and the new non-takedown model which has a shorter 8-inch barrel than the old one. Both of these new variants come standard with a 1913 brace adapter on the end, which makes them compatible out of the box with folding pistol braces like the SB Tactical FS1913. The one I have for review is the 8-inch barreled non-takedown model. It has plastic furniture, an 8-inch threaded barrel, and has no stock sights, but it is optics ready with a 1913 rail on top. Ruger ships these with a 15-round BX-15 magazine where legal, and they also include a UTG bipod. We're not going to be doing any shooting with the bipod, but it's a nice bonus anyway. Underneath the add-ons, it's still more or less a 1022, so it takes 1022 mags, doesn't have a last shot hold open, and has a pretty good trigger out of the box. It also inherits a huge chunk of the 1022's aftermarket support, including Ruger's upgraded BX trigger pack with a lighter, crisper pull than the factory trigger, if you think you need it. There are also companies making different lengths of aftermarket barrels, so even if you get the 8-inch model, you can trade up to a 12-inch barrel or all the way down to 4.5 if you aren't a size queen. The grip that comes on the gun is Ruger's A2 style grip from their ARs, but you can easily replace it with any AR compatible grip, which I did. The Ruger style grip is comfortable, but too slick for my liking. The brace adapter has a built-in QD cup for sling attachment. I've configured this one with an SB Tactical FS 1913 polymer folding brace, a suppressor, and a Bushnell TRS-25 red dot on a small riser. Total weight, as configured, with an empty BX-25 mag is 4 pounds, 15 ounces. Those modifications turn it from some kind of weird varmint hunting pistol into the absolute most fun you can have at the range without machine guns or tannerite. The Charger pistol with a brace on it is the ultimate plinker and would be a damn good pack gun or kit gun provided you're okay with not having iron sights. Modern red dots are so durable and the batteries last so long I wouldn't consider it an issue, but if that worries you, consider going with an etched reticle prism sight instead of a traditional red die. But once you add a suppressor to the charger, it might even be something more than a fun gun. I'm not sure if you believe in the concept of a tactical 22, but if you do, it's hard to deny that this is it. Yes, this is it. Ruger, you perfected it. You did it. The Charger, paired with a can and the right ammo, like CCI suppressor, 45 grain lead hollow point, is extremely quiet. The 25 round Ruger mags provide extra firepower. The folding brace makes it compact and handy. The small size and very short length of pull with the folding brace makes it a bit unwieldy, but you can get used to it. And because the 22 is so light recoiling, a compromised shooting position is not an issue. So which variant of the Charger is the best? That's where we have to circle back to the Charger takedown I used to own. I loved that thing even though it was completely unreliable, though I did discover that I could pull back on the magazine while firing to improve reliability. Anyway, that sort of poisoned me against the takedown model, but more than that I don't like the side effects of the takedown mechanism. First problem, when you rest the forend on something, it causes enough barrel deflection to shift your point of impact significantly. On mine, it would shift 1 inch vertically at 10 yards while rested. If I increase the tension on the barrel takedown mechanism to the point where I could barely reassemble the gun, the shift would decrease down to under half an inch, but reliability would decrease down to almost zero. Also, if you're taking the gun apart so you can store it in a pack for transport, you run the risk of a zero shift when you put it back together again. 
That's just a reality of the design, since the optic is mounted to the receiver, not the barrel. It's why the Ruger PC carbine and 1022 takedown models have the rear sight on the barrel, not the receiver. It's why the PC carbine tactical has a red dot rail on the barrel as well. If you really need to be able to put the charger in a backpack with a suppressor mounted, you'll probably need the takedown model. Even with the 2 inch shorter barrel on the non-takedown, once you put a can on it, it will not fit in an average backpack without looking very conspicuous. You could get a QD suppressor mount instead and just stash the gun with the suppressor detached. It's probably a safe bet that if you're ever in such a dire emergency that you need to whip the gun out in a real hurry, you probably wouldn't need the suppressor anyway, right? I don't know, that's a real what-if scenario. At this point, I should point out that we here at TFBTV do not endorse truck guns or off-body carry, so be smart about it. Let's talk about weight for a second. The original polymer furniture charger is billed at 50 ounces. The original takedown charger is billed at 51 and a half ounces, which makes sense. The takedown mechanism adds a little bit of extra material to the gun. The new non-takedown model with the 8-inch barrel, however, is billed at 52 ounces. Dropping 2 inches of barrel and replacing the plastic cover on the rear with an aluminum brace adapter adds 2 ounces. And the Charger Takedown Light with the vented barrel shroud is the heaviest model in the whole range, weighing in at 57 ounces. Ruger, I'm not sure how you pulled that off. Does the Charger Light have a collapsed neutron star hiding inside the grip? Anyway, I don't want a takedown mechanism to get in my way, and I don't want an extra 7 ounces of mystery weight, so I think the 8-inch barrel non-takedown charger is the superior model. That's also why I think the FS1913 polymer strut folding brace is perfect for this application. It's lighter and cheaper than the aluminum one, and more than sturdy enough for the minimal recoil of 22 long rifle. I'm the most miserable person alive. So how's the reliability on the charger? Excellent for a 1022. I had a spread of different jams with the charger, pretty typical stuff. Some stove pipes, and when using the BX25 and BX15 mags, occasional jams for the round on deck gets jammed into the top of the chamber and crumpled by the bolt. As a point of comparison, my Marlin 795 has never jammed or failed with the factory 10 round magazines, and it has to get really damn dirty before it starts having problems with the Pro Mag 25 rounders. I'm not going to claim that's indicative of all 795s or all 1022s, but in my experience, the 1022 isn't the most reliable rimfire out there. It may be the best, it may be the most durable, but its tolerance for garbage ammo and extended assault clip seems lower than other designs. That being said, the reliability of the charger was still completely acceptable. I ran it with a ton of dirt cheap bulk as well as some of the fancier stuff like CCI Suppressor, Federal Suppressor, and a few brands of regular off-the-shelf subsonics. Velocity is lost with the shorter barrel. I chronoed the suppressed charger versus the Winchester Wildcat I was testing recently, which has an 18-inch barrel. The 18-inch Wildcat averaged 1,280 FPS with high-velocity bulk ammo, and the suppressed charger averaged 1,221 FPS. So, first of all, not a major loss of velocity. And second of all, the suppressed charger still pushes 36 grain bulk to over supersonic velocities, so you'll want to use subsonics if you want it to be comfortably quiet with the can. There's only one thing I would really want Ruger to change about the charger, a molded in accessory rail instead of a front sling stud. The Wildcat kind of spoiled me on this regard. That way you can slap a bipod on directly without using a sling stud adapter, or you could put a weapon light on it, which is what I want the most. And if we're making a Ruger wish list, a tactical version of the 1022 Charger that incorporates some features of the PC Carbine and the PC Charger would be the coolest thing since Gogurt. How about a free float handguard with M-lock slots on the bottom and sides, and a short run of pick rail at the front for a front iron sight? That way you could use a red dot and backup irons. Do all that plus a weapon light, and it might convince a few more people of the validity of the Tactical 22 as a concept. You can get something similar supplied by the aftermarket, but you'll end up spending as much again as the gun cost in the first place. Ruger can do the same thing, cheaper and better. They're Ruger, that's pretty much their MO. Thanks for watching guys. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. We appreciate their support, so please go and check them out. We are also supported directly via Subscribestar and Patreon. Links to both of those as well as our Discord server are in the video description. See you next time.